So it's a natural phase-based synthetic structure. Um, yes, okay, so let's come back here to the notion of symplectic capacity. Uh, M is a positive definite matrix. It follows that Jm has eigenvalues which are of the type plus or minus i lambda j for j equal to 1, 2, and so on, n. Why is it so? Well, this is quite easy to see because since m is positive definite, I can write it as the square of its square root, which is very well defined, okay? You define the square root of m just by dividing the diagonal form by taking the square roots of the eigenvalues and then that's it. And it follows that Jm is equivalent to m square root Jm square root, of course, because you know that if you have two matrices, A and B, one of them being uh, non-singular, non then AB and BA are equivalent in the sense that they have the same eigenvalues. Now, look at this matrix. It's an anti-symmetric matrix, of course, because if you transpose it, you transpose only the J, and J is anti-symmetric. You transpose J is equal to minus J. So it follows that all the eigenvalues are of this type here. Now we take the, in addition, of course, assume that each lambda is positive. And it follows that you have here a sequence of numbers, real numbers, positive real numbers, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. And lambda, the lambda appearing here, is the largest of these numbers. And this is called the symplectic capacity of this phase space ellipsoid. I'm going to explain to you uh, why and why this is interesting here. Because one proves, uh, it's not obvious at all, that you cannot send two large balls inside these ellipsoids using only symplectic transformations. This is a variant of the principle of the symplectic canon. Yeah, let me explain because I think it's going to be essential for the understanding of the uncertainty principle and from the symplectic point of view. Um, first, what is a <coughs> symplectic transformation or a linear symplectic transformation? Good. Uh, let's take a matrix S equal to A, B, C, D. 2n, 2n matrix so written in block form. The blocks have dimension n here. So we say that S is symplectic if and only if Sj, S transpose, is equal to j, which is equivalent actually to saying that this is S transpose j s. So this is the definition of a symplectic matrix. Well, it's easy actually to write uh, explicit relations for the uh, for the blocks A, B, C, D. Uh, for instance, you find that you must have uh, A, T, D minus uh, C, T, D equal to the identity. You find that A, B, T must be symmetric and so on. You have quite many relations. Uh, in optics, uh, these relations are called the Lüneburg or Lüneburg relations. Because symplectic matrices uh, play a fundamental role in optics, linear optics. Well, an alternative way of saying this is to say that sigma of S, Z, S, Z prime is equal to sigma of Z, Z prime for all vectors z, z prime. So in other words, a matrix or an automorphism of R to N is symplectic if and only if it preserves the symplectic form sigma. Uh, from this follows, by the way, that symplectic matrices form a group. And the group is often denoted by SPN. This is the symplectic group. Is a crucial role in Hamiltonian mechanics. It's a, one of the classical Lie groups because it's closed in the group GL uh, to an R of all 
invertible automorphisms. In closed, it's a Lie group, okay? Or a classical Lie group. It's easy to describe its uh, Lie algebra, but I won't do it here because we don't need it. And why is it so important in Hamiltonian mechanics? Well, take a Hamiltonian function. It determines a flow, okay? A phase-based <coughs> flow. Now, if you calculate the Jacobian of this flow at every point, you get the matrix. And this matrix is always symplectic. That's another way of saying that Hamiltonian flows consist of canonical transformations. That's all. Right. And a symplectic matrix is just a linear canonical transformation. That's all. Uh, it follows from this here tradition that you must have determinant of S equal to plus or minus 1. In fact, this is a little bit delicate to prove. The determinant of a symplectic matrix is always equal to 1. Hence, symplectic matrices are volume preserving. Okay, volume preserving. And it follows that Hamiltonian flows also are volume preserving. That's UV's theorem. Okay? Yeah. Come back to this. Good. If you have any questions here, please feel free to interrupt me. Okay? Fine. So, the symplectic canon now. Okay. Well, okay, let's have a look at this ellipsoid here. You can ask a question, okay, I'm not going to now I'm not going to be to do any anything here on the on the screen. <laughs> Once I did that, I confess I did not realize that what I was doing that. <laughs> again here and with um, symplectic capacity equal to 2 pi over lambda. Let me write this like pi r squared. That is, in other words, I define the r by uh, r squared is going to be 2 over lambda, so r is going to be square root of, yeah, square root of 2 over lambda. Okay. This is right. Yes. Okay. Suppose now I have a ball here. Did I do something wrong? No, no, no. Okay. Take a ball with radius r. And the natural question now is, can I find a symplectic matrix S and a translation allowing me to push, to, to squeeze this ball inside this ellipsoid? Well, symplectic matrices of Automorphisms that they represent can distort, of course. Uh, generally, a uh, linear automorphism would transform this in a, an ellipsoid or something like that. So you can ask, yeah, well, under which conditions on R can I distort this ball using translations, of course, uh, it's too far, nothing is going to happen here, and symplectic matrices to push this ball here inside. Inside the ellipsoid. Okay, the answer is that it is impossible if R is larger than this here. And it's always possible if R is smaller or equal to R. One could think that, okay, but uh, using all the <coughs> linear transformation is, is very rigid. But perhaps we could do better using general symplectic transformations, canonical transformations, non linear ones. Okay, but a canonical transformation, F is a canonical transformation, or as they are called in mathematics, symplectomorphism. If, as I said, symplectomorphism, if its Jacobian matrix prime Z is in SPN hmm, for, every, for every Z for which it is defined. Okay, the thing is the same. Now, this is a very deep theorem which is called Gromov's non squeezing theorem. It is impossible to squeeze a ball like this inside this ellipsoid using very general uh, canonical 